there's a huge interest and conversation this month around uh, napping tactics as a, mm -hmm. as a way. And obviously, we've all gone into a new way of working in, in the last year. And um, so already on the chat, I can see Willow, Emma, Anna, all saying that trying out the tactic of napping, but mm -hmm. either struggling to fall into a nap or if they do, then being in zombie mode um, right. or going too deep. Um, right. I, I remember the story in the book about holding the key or whatever it was in the hand, and, <laughs> and you know that, that sort of wake show. I forget what, which great philosopher it was, but um, what's what have you learned personally about the art of napping? Um, first of all, practice makes perfect. I think that sort of the more <laughs> seriously, you know, it's one of these things where the more you do it, the better your body gets at it. It's like you know, in, there is a kind of muscle memory to or of uh, to napping. The second is that um, even if you don't fall completely asleep, those, you know, 20 minutes where you're reclining, you're relaxed, you're letting your mind wander, those actually do still have substantial or of restorative, uh, restorative value. And then the third thing is that um, keep the nap short, really, you know, set you know, basically either nap for 20 minutes or for 90 minutes, right? You want to get you either want to wake up before you fall into a deep sleep or let yourself go through one complete sleep cycle, which is about 90 minutes long. Okay. And doing so will avoid, you know, that kind of that that sort of sense of sort of sleep inertia or sort of sleep hangover that can come if you wake up in the, you know, it, and you've interrupted um, sort of uh, and you've come out of come out of deep sleep too early. And Anna and Igor just reminded me that it was Dali, of course, that um, right. had that tactic. And uh, the outcome was, you know, melting clocks and a surrealist revolution. So it obviously worked for him. 